Okay, so welcome to this video. As you know that the mass balance is one of the most important and critical parameters into the forced degradation of related substances. I mean one cannot really ascertain whether the all degradants are suitably quantified or detected without measuring the mass balance. And that's where the importance of mass balance is. In ideal world, you know what we must expect? There must be a 100% mass balance. But in realities, you know, this may not be the situation. There may be a situation where your mass balance is less than 100%. There may be a situation where your mass balance is greater than 100%. So let us understand, you know, what could be the probable reasons for this lower mass balance or the higher mass balance. And here we go with the presentation. So as a part of this video, you know, we are going to talk about the very first point that is the definition of the mass balance. Then what are the reasons for the lower mass balance and what are the reasons for the higher mass balance. And let us talk about the definition of the mass balance. So the mass balance, you know, needs to be conducted during when? During the forced degradation study of the related substances. And here is the calculation formula. The amount of API, you no, know, this is not the calculation formula by the way, but this is a concept which will help you in understanding the mass balance equation. So the expectation is what? The amount of API before forced degradation will be equal to amount of API after forced degradation study and plus there will be a certain amount of degradants generated during the forced degradation study. But there must be a equal mass present to the left side and the right side. And here is the calculation formula for the mass balance. So the mass balance into related substances can be calculated with the calculation formula that is percent mass balance equal to percent assay of the API after force degradation plus percent degradants divided by percent assay of API before force degradation into 100. So what is the acceptance criteria for mass balance? So if you uh, look into various regulatory guidelines, you will not find any as such acceptance criteria, but the not less than 95% is widely accepted and used and followed across many organizations. So you can think of using 95% as the main minimum requirement for the mass balance. So let us now understand what are the reasons you know, for the lower mass balance. What are the reasons for lower mass balance? And we are going to talk about this total eight number of reasons which can result into a lower mass balance. So the very first reason is what? Degradants with lack of the response. So for example, if you are using HPLC method for related substances quantification and if your detector is a UV detector. So in case there are degradants coming out of your API which does not have the chromophores, they do not have any UV activity and out of not having UV activity, they are not going to respond to the detectors. That doesn't mean they are actually present. So if this is the case where the 5% you are getting such kind of impurities, you will straightforward lose 5% of the mass and you will you know, come across a situation where 5% mass will be short. The early eluting degradants. So if, in case if you are using reverse space chromatography and if your degradant is highly polar in nature, that can elute too early into the chromatographic run. And if there are solvent peaks coming out of the degradation study, if there are the reagents giving the response very early into the chromatographic run, so this very early eluting peak may co-elute with solvent or the reagent of the degradation and you will not be able to uh, judge, understand uh, that where they are missing. And as they are co-eluting with the solvent peaks, or the degradation reagent, you will not be able to quantify them. And as you are not able to quantify them, you will lose those 
percentage of the impurities during the evaluation of the mass balance and you will again fall short of that particular uh, degradants which are eluting really early into the chromatographic run degradants with low relative response factor okay so you have a degradant which is well separated right but the problem now they are with the lower response they are not with the equal response to the apis because of this different response are very specifically because of the lower response you will end establishing them to the lower side so in reality the impurities contain maybe let us say 15 percent but as they have only half of the response as compared to the api you will say there are only 7.5% and you will lose 7.5% of the potential mass during the calculations. And then again, you will fall short of the mass balance. non eluting degradants. So if your degradants are, for example, highly non-polar, right? And you are running a reverse space chromatography. And if these degradants are not at all eluting out of the column, because they are, they are having a very strong affinity towards the stationary phase. And then you will see that, okay, now these peaks are not eluting. And as these peaks are not eluting, these degradants are not eluting out of the column, you will end losing them during the quantification. And then you will fall short of the mass balance. Volatile degradants. So as you may be treating the sample solution with the thermal treatment, right and if there are degradants possible which are really volatile in nature or maybe gaseous in nature they will easily escape out of the sample solution during the treatment itself and you will not have any chance to understand and uh, you know detect all those volatile compounds during the chromatographic run because they have already already escaped your sample solutions and not available for the further quantification but you already have a loss of the mass now and you will fall short of the mass in case of volatile degradants. The poor recovery of the degradation products. So in case if you have a very complex sample matrix and if there are degradants which are getting generated but they have a strong affinity towards the sample complex matrix which is let us say into undissolved form. So these degradants are going to get adsorbed or absorbed onto the surface of the sample matrix and they will not be available into actual sample solution. So if you filter the sample solution or centrifuge the sample solution, you are actually separating your degradants along with the solidified sample mass. And you are going to lose all this, um, uh, all this degradant mass during the quantification because you are never going to inject those degradants into the chromatographic run. And then you will fall short of the mass balance in case of the poor recovery of the degradation products. The precipitation of degradation products. So in case if your API is not getting precipitated into the given solvent system, but if the degradants which are generated during the treatment, if they do not have the adequate solubility into the selected diluent system, they will get precipitated out. And if you separate out this un, uh, you know, undissolved masses, you are going to lose a good amount of mass during the analysis because they are actually not present into a solution form but you have separated out them during the sample treatment like a filtration and the centrifugation. And because of that, you will fall short of the mass balance. The poor method sensitivity. In case if a method is not really a sensitive enough to detect those all small, small <clears throat> degradants generated during the fourth degradation study and accommodating all these small, small peaks which are not getting you know, detected, you may lose the, you may lose these small, small impurities and degradants, and you will again fall the short of the mass. So this, these are the reason, you know, by which you may end up getting the lower mass balance. So understand into your situation, which one could be the more relevant scenario. The third is now, now it is not only the, the lower mass balance is practically possible, but it is also the higher mass balance can be a practically possible situation. So let us understand what are the situations wherein the higher mass balance can be a possibility. And here is the first one. Degradants with a higher relative response factor. 
right if the degradant that you are now uh, ob observing if they have the higher response into the selected wavelength right if they have double the response as compared to the api and if only 10 percent is actually converting into that impurities you will end up quantifying that impurity as a 20 percent because why your response is just double the response of degradant is just double than the api's response right so actual 10 percent mass will appear the 20 percent mass when you calculate so you will end up getting the 10 percent higher mass balance it must be 100 percent but you may end up getting the 110 percentage as the mass balance because there's a difference into the response of the degradants the formation of adduct or the sort see in some cases your api may also form an adduct with the uh, maybe your excipients if in case of drug product or maybe with the uh, degradation reagents right and as now this adduct is what your api right your api plus the little mass of your excipient or the degradation reagent so this little mass of degradation reagent is actually addition to your mass okay is actually addition to your mass just assume that if you have a diperiodomal api and if you have a diperiodomal capsule the capsule contain the tartaric acid okay so the diperiodomal is going to get interacted with the tartaric acid and you will get the diperiodomal tartarate adduct diperiodomal tartarate adduct now this tartarate part was never part of your diperiodomal earlier and this is something you know the additional mass you are going to quantify and that will further lead to the higher mass balance the third one is the degradant peak co with api in assay method now this is something uh, very peculiar so what is the reason here is you know you have a sample which is a forced degradation sample for example acid hydrolysis sample now, as a part of establishment of the mass balance, if you are, let us say, assume using the validated assay method. But for some reason, if the assay method is not able to separate out the degradants generated into the acid hydrolysis. So what is going to happen if there are 10 percentage of the degradants, right, coming out of the acid hydrolysis. But if these degradants are co eluting with your principal peak into assay run you will say that this additional 10 percent will reflect into the response to the peak response to the peak and you will end up quantifying the higher assay so now this impurity acid hydrolysis is actually quantified and measured and detected during the related substances run as well okay so there is a 10 percent already quantified in related substances run but as this 10% impurity got merged into the principal peak during the assay run, it has co eluted with the assay run. This will also get again quantified as the API assay. Then the 10% will be again extra uh, into the assay quantification part. And this impurity will get quantified for the twice. And you will end up with the 10% additional mass. So these are the various reasons, you know, where you can have the higher mass balance also. So understand what are the situations possible into your degradation study and how you can justify the lower or the higher mass balances. It is up to you to devise a proper justification, you know, for the lower or the higher mass balances. So thank you very much for watching this video and i will meet you soon with such kind of informative and useful videos till then take care and bye bye see you soon